Hello, welcome back to the photo brew. Man, how long has it been since we did an episode? Like two weeks? Yeah. It's yeah. Been, it's been a long time. We've been busy. Been, yeah. You've been busy. I've been really busy. I, uh, <laughs> I've been very lucky to be able to book work during these crazy times. So um, one of the gigs that I just booked, I'm not going to talk about it too much just because secrecy. Uh, but it's going to pay me enough money so I could buy a new um, iMac because uh, nice. I'm desperately needing a new computer. Nice. I'm going to have to buy yours off of you. <laughs> Do it, man. <laughs> no, you need. You still need your uh, to-go computer. Yeah, because I, I was thinking of getting the 16-inch MacBook. Uh-huh. And then I saw the price on the um, top-end, like, semi-base configuration uh, 2020 iMac. And it's the same price. Uh, you could upgrade the RAM on the iMac because it has a little RAM door. It's not soldered on like on the MacBooks. Mm -hmm. And you get 8 gigs of video memory, whereas you get 4 on the Mac. 512 SSD, that's totally fine. I have tons of hard drive space, uh, at, like externals I could plug in. And uh, you get an 8-core 10th gen i7 at 3.5 gigahertz with a turbo boost of 5. Mm -hmm. So because it's a full desktop class processor, it's not like a mobile version of it. Whereas on the um, on the MacBook, I think it's a lot. Uh, I forgot the exact voltage, but it's a lot less because it's a mobile processor. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? I'll buy that. It's gonna last me five to six years. I'll be good. Yeah, and it's it's disappointing. Like I feel like MacBooks now are so disappointing unless you're buying the top, top, top of the line, and even then it's still disappointing. Like yeah, but you're looking to drop like four <laughs> grand on a computer, yeah, on, a, on a laptop for a laptop, and if you buy the like starting ones you might as well just get a macbook air at that point yeah like it's the same shit yeah like i will probably buy another macbook at some point but realistically if i do buy another macbook yeah. it's probably just gonna be like the base 13 inch again just because for my like mobile needs mm -hmm. 13 inches is totally fine and obviously i'm not going to be editing like 4k video on it that's yeah. what the desktop is going to be for but but yeah so all right, so what right. are we drinking today? So today, uh, we are trying this coffee from Pirates of Coffee. Uh, this is the Treasure of Panama. I haven't tried this one yet. I had the other one at home that they sent me. I forgot what flavor, or uh, not the flavor, but like what the name of it was. Right. But it's pretty good. Uh, so the, this is supposed to taste like caramel, snicker bar, and mm -hmm. cane sugar. I kind of like that they went with the notes Instead of like saying like, oh yeah, it tastes like this fruit and that fruit, you know, like how most coffee, like, you know, for comparison, we saw the James Coffee one here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this one has like red berry, sweet cocoa and salted caramel notes. A lot of people who may not be familiar with any of those flavors, they're like, what the hell is this? <laughs> but I like that, you know, they have like snicker bars on there because I think everyone's yeah. had snickers at some point. And it's the treasure of Panama. Insert Van Halen song here. There you go. Rest <laughs> in peace. Yes, rest in peace. To the goat. All right, let's try let's this, see. baby. Ooh, that's smooth. Oh, fuck. It does taste like Snickers. I don't taste the Snickers. I, I do. Taste, I taste the cane sugar, and I taste the sweetness. Like, for drinking a coffee black, and you have the sweetness to it already, like, man. I don't taste the caramel. I do, but I I guess it's also because it does taste like Snickers, and so Snickers do yeah. have caramel. But then again, I kind of screwed myself because when I went to grind the beans, I ate one of the beans, and now oh. I'm, all I'm tasting is that coffee. You pulled an Adrian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I do that every time we get coffee. Now I try a bean. I'm like, oh, what is this gonna taste like? Yeah, this but is really good. good. I'm yeah. really liking it. It's it, it's really smooth. And it's seven o'clock at night, so I'm screwed for work. Then I don't have to work because I'm on unemployment. <laughs> oh man! So I get to sleep. Well, actually, I'm not gonna be able to sleep in because my cats will wake me up at five a.m. because yeah. they're like, hey, we're hungry. <laughs> So yeah, normally we record these on a Friday night, yeah. but because we've been so busy, we're now doing it on Sunday. Mm -hmm. So if you didn't get the the memo podcast, today, we didn't tell anybody actually. We're just or like, last weekend, yeah, yeah, we didn't say anything. We want to see if you guys noticed. For like um, our two listeners, yeah, <laughs> you guys, you guys know who you are. They yeah. they usually message me. Like, Maybe hey. we'll get some in Panama now. There you go. Yep. But uh, this company is actually, I believe, they're based in Canada, so they source a lot of the coffee beans mm -hmm. um, from around the world. And the whole reason that they're doing this, and I'm I'm totally not saying this because I'm one of their ambassadors, um, but I do like supporting companies that do this, which is they give back to the community. Mm -hmm. And right now they're trying to eliminate the middleman when it comes to exporting coffee. So um, 
basically they'll go direct to the farmers mm -hmm. and buy the coffee from them. And so there's no middle person that's taking a percentage oh, okay. or saying like, yeah, like we're going to charge this much for you to buy coffee beans. And then the farmers only get like a, a fraction of that. Yeah. So I like that they're they're eliminating that middle person. So are they really doing that or is it because coffee's scarce right now? You know, I'm not sure. There's a coffee crisis, if you guys don't know. It's been going on for years now. It's yep. the plague. It's the plague. <laughs> Actually, yeah, like, look it up. It's it's kind of crazy. It's kind of scary because it's like, not my coffee. I know, <laughs> well, man. there's hybrid coffee now, so. Not bean water. I, yeah. No, we're going to have to settle for fucking tea. Oh, I, yeah, I yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny. My girlfriend loves tea. I like drinking tea from time to time. Like, you know, I'll get like an ice cream tea or black tea yeah. on a hot day. But, you know, it's like for breakfast. I can't do it, man. I did it for a while because I had a, I like stopped coffee for a while and mm -hmm. I was doing teas. Uh, it's not bad, but it just it's not the same. Mm -hmm. It's like hot tea in the morning just doesn't have the same effect that a hot cup of coffee has. Yeah. Like, and it's not even about like and now it's the full. caffeine for me in the morning. It's just the like it's the taste. Yeah. It's the like texture of the coffee. Like I don't know. I just don't get that with. Also, I mean, it's it's supposed to be fall already. It's still like ninety degrees out, which is insane. <laughs> and we're like in the middle of October. Yeah, and I think there's another fire in in uh, San Francisco. Yeah, and then one yeah. just started in Colorado. Gosh, man! I was just like, fuck, man. The whole West Coast is on fire. <sighs> but and, the good but, news is, twenty twenty is almost over. And the good news is, in Canada, it's fall. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, they have fall colors. And then uh, my sister showed me a picture. I forgot from which of the resorts, but it's already snowing. Yeah. So I was like, fuck, man. And here, over here, everything's still green, so we have to fake Still fall. green and we're on fire. <laughs> yeah. Still green and on fire. How are we on fire when everything's green? I don't green? know, I but speaking no of fire green. news, did you see the new iPhone? Oh, God. Not, about, <laughs> not Apple again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I saw it. Uh, what do you think about it? I don't really know what's new on it. I think just the only thing that I know is that they have a smaller one now. Yeah, the main. Oh, there's three different ones. And I'm not sure if they all share the same guts, but I do know that it's a ceramic casing. Yeah, which I'm kind of curious. Yeah. So, from what I, what I, I haven't really looked into it because I mean, I really like they have this really cool like blue one. So uh -huh. that's if I were to get it today, like that would be the color I would go to because like yeah. for the 11, well, I have to take off the case. You got the green. I got the green one because I mean, yeah. like, look, this shit looks nice. Yeah, my wife has a green one too, and I'm just like, I want your phone. But. uh... <laughs> If I were to get the 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 twelve, um, I would definitely go with the blue one. Yeah. But from I I really don't know like in terms of like the internals like what's new. Obviously, there's probably a new processor, um, more storage. Yeah. Um, but in terms of the camera, it shoots raw now, which oh, yeah, out of the box, which I'm really like excited for because yeah. to shoot raw on the iPhone, you could either use Lightroom, which I actually just found out. Recently, that you can use Lightroom Mobile to shoot raw. Someone actually, when I did that video on how uh -huh. to shoot raw on your phone, someone pointed it out, and I actually said, "Hey, that's actually a cool thing. I didn't know you could do." Oh yeah, you can just shoot in Lightroom. Yeah, yeah I've yeah, done yeah. that a couple times. But the only thing is, like, okay, I don't know if it happens with your phone, but I have the iPhone Seven. <laughs> so, the iPhone Seven, it has a bit of a lag. So when I mm -hmm. do shoot in Lightroom, the pictures come out blurry. Oh so, okay. I mean, it still happens with the program I use. I think I use Camera Raw. Mm -hmm. I, it's not the same one that you're using. It's uh, it's called ProCam. Oh, okay. So I use a program called ProCam, and that you can shoot raw. And it, um, you have to play with it. I'll still get blurry pictures here and there, but it's, yeah. it's I mean, it's not a camera. I mean, <laughs> uh, I haven't tried shooting on, on this iPhone with uh, Lightroom because I'm so used to Halliday. I like Halliday just because... It's super, super like minimalist controls. Yeah. It's very intuitive, and it's literally you just point out like you just pull your phone out, open up the app, point and shoot, and then you get the shot. Yeah. And to adjust your shutter speed and everything, you just pull up or down the screen. Um, mm -hmm. I like the Moment app too. That one's a little more, um, like for advanced users because it has more oh, like okay. manual controls on screen, so you could really change every like get everything dialed in. Um. But I'm really curious to see how good the dynamic range is going to be with Apple Raw, as opposed to like using one of these like yeah um, other like third party apps that just make like DNG files. Uh -huh. And um, I think the Pro Max has a slightly bigger sensor on the oh, okay. on the for the camera, so slightly better low light. I still think they should throw in a micro four thirds or APS-C sensor in there. <laughs> yeah. 
and just call and, and call it a day because if they they really want to kill the the camera market they need to get a, yeah. a proper sensor in there that could capture bokeh and all that well it's not that it, i think it's just they were, there's a war like going on with first phones were small then they wanted yeah. bigger now they're going back to small and like i think that's why they're making the mini one too because like with me at work i had the the last big phone i had was the success pro mm -hmm. or the success uh, plus. max plus whatever and that thing was just too huge to carry mm -hmm. in your pocket when you're doing construction. So oh, okay. I ended up switching back to the smaller one. And now, so I'm saying, if I ended up getting a newer iPhone, I'd probably get the mini. Mm -hmm. And as long as the cameras were the same, I'd, I'd be interested. But I don't know. Do the other models have LiDAR also? Or is that just the bigger I'm one? not sure, to be honest. I, like, again, we haven't really looked into it because we've just been <laughs> busy. I literally saw the news the day I was yeah. doing um, some stuff with a friend of mine uh, for a project that he's working on that I actually signed an NDA, so I can't talk about about it like uh -huh. as far as like what it is uh -huh. other than like yeah i was busy that day but um i'm not sure if it has i think they might all have lidar which i'm kind of curious how mm -hmm. that would work but i definitely agree with you as far as like going with like the mini um i like the big phones i know yeah. not everyone likes the big phones so the one i have the 11 pro max is i think 6.1 inches mm -hmm. the new 12 pro max and they really need to just change the naming on that. Just call yeah. it Max, like, just, <laughs> uh, or something. Anyways, iPhone big, small, I, yeah. medium. <laughs> um, the <Vente. laughs> iPhone Vente, Trente, Trenta, iPhone Grande. <laughs> but um, so the 12 Pro Max is 6.7 inches. It's almost uh -huh. seven fucking inches. And then the the regular like twelve uh -huh. pro like that would normally be the smaller one is the same size as this one so it's oh, six point one, so if you just get the iPhone twelve you get the the smaller one, and then I think they have the mini then the the medium and then the large yeah and then you go to the pros and you got the large and then the extra large I heard the max was the size of an iP as a um, iPad mini. I mean it's getting there, dude. <laughs> Pretty soon we're gonna just have like I guarantee you <laughs> have, a, have a backpack for your I phone. guarantee you because you know how foldable phones are kind of the thing now mm -hmm. or that's the emerging trend. I guarantee you give oh, it like, like two three Galaxy more years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give it like two to three years. Apple's gonna copy it. Uh -huh. They're probably gonna find a way to like make it seamless, like seamless and yeah. just like intuitive. And they'll probably have some British guy talking about it, so it sounds fancy. Yeah, Johnny Ive. Um, but uh. You know, they'll probably do something like that to, you know, make the phones bigger, but still keep if them it's small. Apple, it won't be a seam. It won't have a seam like um, like the Galaxy. Like the Galaxy. It'll probably just be magnets where it just says click because everything they use. Is oh, yeah. Magnets. The new MagSafe accessories are freaking uh, cool. I'm I, the only concern I have is if if because they have one that's a wallet that snaps onto your phone. Uh -huh. I don't know if that's actually gonna fuck with your credit cards because you know how you if you oh, put a magnet okay, next yeah. to them, we could de demagnetize them and like fuck up your strips. So I don't know how that's gonna work, but I think it's cool that um, you know that you could just like pop on accessories at at, at, yeah. at will. Marques Brownlee MKBHD actually said that he suspects that within the next generation or two of iPhones they're going to get rid of the lightning port uh -huh. because one of the accessories is a charger for wireless charging and it snaps on with uh -huh. MagSafe. So they, he definitely sees them going that route. Yeah. Um, especially because that's kind of like going to be the new thing going into the so future. So no cords. No cord. Or, well, I mean, you still need to plug in the charger to the wall to yeah. power it to charge your phone wirelessly, but you don't actually have to plug it into yeah. the phone. That'd be good because, like, I buy a new iPhone charging cable. I mean, not the Apple brand. Like, seriously, Just third party. Like, every, like, two, three months I'll buy one, and then their licensing goes out, and then my cord doesn't fucking work. I'm like, what the fuck? Dude? Yeah. Like, how do they know? It's not like I update my phone, but it just <laughs> stops working. Yeah. Like, pisses me off. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and uh, to reduce their carbon footprint, they're actually not shipping any of the new iPhones with a brick. Uh -huh. You get the cable to charge it, so you plug in your computer, or because they assume oh, really? that you already have a brick. Because wow. they they said they made like I think twenty two million or something. Don't quote me on the number. Millions of dollars in accessories. Uh -huh. So they're like, yeah, I'm pre we're pretty sure you already own a few bricks. Yeah. Um. So you're just getting the USB C to Lightning. Uh huh. And the phone, that's it. So the phone case, the box is actually thinner. Oh, okay. And you're not getting headphones either. Yeah. Because they want you to buy AirPods. Yep. 
I, I, I kind of want to buy AirPods Pro, but I can't justify the 250 Dude, Home Depot's got them for 35 bucks. <laughs> Just knockoff brand. Yeah, I heard they're pretty good, too, yeah. so I'm tempted to buy some. I got to I gotta look into that. 35 bucks. Yeah, because I have the first gen AirPods, and like, I mean, I still love them. They're they're great. I heard the Amazon ones are pretty good too. Yeah, the, the, everyone's Amazon. really like dropped a lot of good uh, yeah. like competitors. So, but um, yeah, I'm really curious to see like what next big thing they're gonna do with the iPhone because it's literally a bigger like iPhone five. Mm -hmm. You know, remember the, the one that was more um, angular and square looking? Yeah, it's literally a bigger design of that. And I'm pretty sure that's going to be the standard for the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. And then this design that was super thin and flat is going to get forgotten. And then what they're going to recycle yeah. and it's like, oh, yeah, look, we made it thinner. I think a lot of these companies are going to have to figure out something. Because when I was looking into buying, going back to the computers, like we were talking about mm -hmm. earlier, when I was looking into buying a new um, MacBook, which I'm not going to do now. I'm going to do the same thing you're doing. Yeah, going to iMac. iMac. Um, and then I'll probably get, like, maybe in Mac Air just to edit photos or something on the yeah. fly. But um or an iPad. But um when going back to that, when I'm looking at the computer, my computer's eleven years old and it still runs like brand new. The only mm -hmm. thing is it I can't run certain programs yeah, or certain the because, software. you know, I, they won't allow me to update anymore. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with my computer. I just can't do the new newer updates. But when I was looking into it of why that is or like why like so many people are going back and buying like nine year old, ten year old computers and just upgrading everything and making them better than the newer computers out. It's saying that like technology is slowed down. Like computers used to be obsolete like every six months, mm -hmm. every year. Like now it's slowed down so so much that they're just kind of like, well, what can we do to make them better? Like, yeah, I mean, pretty soon it's just gonna be everything's just gonna be like, was it like uh, the solid state? Yeah, uh, it's it's all gonna be so tiny and they don't really know what else they can add to it except make everything smaller. <laughs> I, uh, I'm trying to remember this is law of computers uh, that uh, I, I can't remember the fucking name of it. <laughs> but basically, um, it was one of the guys at Intel, I think, that coined it. And he basically said that every year or so, the number of transistors on a processor mm -hmm. double. And it's going to get to the point where you can no longer double that number. So you're yeah. going to hit a, eventually we're going to hit a wall. With, yeah. with the processors that's almost where it's at now. yeah and so and that's why i'm kind of curious to see how apple's going to do their own silicon like processors yeah. for their macs because i think they're dropping this year but i'm still i'm just gonna get an like intel one just because i'm not gonna buy first gen product yeah because we don't know how it's gonna be yeah. um and not everything's probably gonna work on it right off the bat. So it's like if if you can't run Lightroom, for example, like it's just a waste yeah. of money if you can't edit your photos. But we're get, already getting to that point, and they the guys over at Intel said that the way that they're gonna get around those limitations is through software optimization. Mm -hmm. And if you look at, for example, with the iPhone with their camera uh, app, you have like the 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 night mode on the on the mm -hmm. 11 Pro is insane. It's basically a long exposure. But it looks so fucking good. Yeah. For a, a camera. On I remember a phone. when you took that shot in downtown LA when we we're out there. It was like, what the fuck? I know. I, I can't even just, get that on my. Yeah, exactly. My so, camera. so it's just like, <laughs> like so. Apple is definitely doing something with the software to yeah. like, you know, where one would probably even argue that they don't need to get a bigger sensor on the camera. Mm -hmm. They could probably get away with the, whatever size sensor is in here and just optimize the software to kind of help like overcome yeah. some of those limitations. But I'm really curious to see how they're going to implement it. But just imagine, dude, there was like an APS-C size yeah. camera on an iPhone. That'd be insane. Or if there was an Apple camera. Yeah. You, Dude, that would totally... I I feel like if Apple made a camera, it would destroy Leica. Yeah. It would be like the, the ultimate like hipster camera. <laughs> Serious. And it's funny because like I've always wanted to look at Leicas too. But it's like everyone says that it's just... It's just for show. Like, yeah. I mean, they're good cameras. Don't get me wrong, but they're just like you can buy a, a camera for like a quarter of the cost that has way more bells and whistles than that thing. And more shit. lenses too. Yeah. I mean, I not. I'm not gonna lie. I want a Leica. Yeah, I want an M6. But it's it's <laughs> literally just like you said. It's just to say you have it. Yeah. And it's like I mean I like my Canon, so it's just yeah. like I don't want to buy another camera brand excuse me i don't want to buy another camera brand and then like 
say, oh, I want to go all in on this camera brand. <laughs> uh, you know, and again, like great camera company, but I think for what you're getting is like in the digital sense, mm -hmm. now that everything's shifted to digital, I definitely think they're overpriced for what they are. Yeah. For the film era, definitely totally worth every penny because the level of engineering that goes into making those cameras back then tanks. exactly yeah, like i have a friend that shoots i forgot uh which model of leica he has but it's like you know from the film days mm -hmm. you know you're talking about like 30 year old camera that works like a champ yeah the way they freaking wear down the patina on them they've i mean i've seen people that have like dropped them chucked them and they're like they're pristine i should get tank. one just for edc pictures <laughs> serious find, <laughs> the, find the oldest find the oldest one you can for as cheap as even if it doesn't work just yeah just literally for <laughs> that's kind of why i want to buy the a complete side tangent that's kind of why i want to buy the peter mckinnon candle tomorrow <laughs> i don't like i'm not really into candles uh -huh. um i just want the tin because it's rusted and patina to the max yeah. and it looks fucking great so hopefully because there's only gonna be 50 yeah that's what so i want one too, I, uh, i'm hoping that i could get my hands on one yeah but uh but yeah um I don't know, man, like I feel like if I were to like for me, the reason I upgraded to this iPhone, going uh -huh. back to the phones real quick. I wanted the ultra wide because yeah. it's cool to have like a 13 millimeter equivalent on your phone, because when I shot when I had the 16 to 35, I rarely use that lens because mm -hmm. it was too wide. So having this on your phone when you want to get a nice landscape and go wide, that's mm -hmm. totally great. But. I mean, it's literally the same triple camera system on the 12 Pro Max. Yeah. So I really don't see a point other than like the lidar, the lidar, the the Apple rod. But I'm assuming that's gonna come. Of... I'm 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 hoping that comes to this phone. Yeah, with an update or something. Yeah, it probably and then, will. And then the Pro Max, the 12 Pro Max, um, has a 2.5x zoom, as opposed to the 2x. Yeah. So it's just like okay, you can zoom in a little, little closer. A little bit more, yeah. But yeah, I mean, we'll we'll see. I do like that blue though. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, I'm done with my coffee. And we'll call it a day here. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching the yeah, photo brew. Thank you. Um, go ahead and subscribe uh, on YouTube because this totally still goes on YouTube. Yep, subscribe yep. on spoofy or spotify <laughs> if you watch game grumps you'll get the reference yeah. um apple music wherever you listen to your podcasts go follow manny at uh manny Bessarel. bro you don't remember your instagram yeah i don't remember <laughs> <laughs> and follow me on instagram <laughs> at dlo visuals we'll see you guys in the next episode <laughs> bye later